Hello there, welcome back. Um, today's video is titled One Thing, but actually contains much more than what my title will be. I'm basically going to be talking about both Night and Fog, which is the title of the video, but also I'm going to be talking about Triumph as well. Which I, I don't want to put that in the title, I don't want any lunatic, right wing nuts watching this and thinking whatever they're going to watch, I don't want those kind of comments, I don't want any of that garbage. So I'm going to talk about the film, but I'm not going to advertise on talking about the film because I don't really want to get the kind of very dubious person with weird interests in that subject, if you know what I mean. I don't, I don't want Nazis watching this video on my channel really. So, um that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to have to start with Triumph of the Will because there's a point to all of this. Um, Triumph of the Will was made by Lenny Riefenstahl. Night and Fog was made by Alan Rennie. One was made before the war, one was made after the war. And it shows the two different psychologies involved um, around the war. And it shows that the fantasy that led to the war and the reality that came out of that fantasy. So that's why I'm pairing them together. I'm also going to pair two films together next week as well. Um, I'm also in this subject. I've become kind of very interested in this subject because it's about the reality of the way the world works and how fantasy can create real problems for people if they take them seriously. So it's, it's become a subject I'm very interested in. So I've still got next week to do and then I'll probably move off it for a while because um, it's kind of depressing. So anyway, so we'll start off with Triumph of the Will. Triumph of the Will is a very hard time to get hold of. I end up seeing it on Amazon Prime because I'm a Prime member. I thought it was on Amazon Prime so I watched it. It's an hour and 50 minutes long. And I was the fact that it's just very disturbing. I shall support warn you that it's very boring. I mean, after the... I mean, there's a lot of terrific craftsmanship involved in the way it's put together but it's also very creepy and it's just a parade you know it's just this Nazi parade and there's there's no way it should be as long as it is because there's not much content there's really not much content at all it's all about the stylization of the Nazis and how they present themselves rather than any content that's actually intellectually stimulating in any way because there's nothing there. There's really nothing. Because if you look into the Nazis, there's nothing there that's actually intellectually curious. It's authoritarianism at its most base level. That and communism, these two are the, the base horrific some sort of psychopathologies pushed to like political extremes. Those two are the, the examples. So that's when the Nazis are not called to national socialists, which means that um, they're nationalistic towards their past, what they think Germany should be, and they're socialistic in the way that they are basically, there's a lot of state involvement in what they're doing, like they're, the state mandates a lot of what the society is. The state um, is very sensor censorious about certain things. The state uh, believes that uh, people serve it. So there are ties between communism and Nazism, but there's also ties between Nazism and any kind of colonialism. There is, you know. There's a certain psychology that extreme right and extreme left have, which is you serve us, you serve our pathologies, you have no right to complain, you have no real rights, like this fantasy we have is the, is the reality of the world and it's pretty sick. It's actually really sick and it causes a lot of problems, causes it's, it's a big reason, I mean, just watching this repeat itself again and again through lots of different societies, this whole idea of the state being 
the important thing is something that I think a lot of people now bouncing away from are really suspicious of. Like, rightfully so suspicious. I mean, sometimes they go to extreme towards another. Instead of saying, oh, this whole pathology is bad, they'll just say, that first pathology is bad, this version is good. And it's like, no, it's not. They're all, they're all bad. You know. Doesn't mean I'm a, <laughs> I'm a libertarian or anything. I'm not, but... There, are, there is a kind of this problem with societies that go towards a sort of, um, the state being the, the reason for being. So the Nazis had this pathology. The, after World War I, Germany threw a lot of problems. It had a bit of a... It was a lot of debt. Then in the 20s, there was a boom period where, the, where the, uh, they started to get their society back and functioning and make movies and make industry, then it all collapsed and that's when the Nazis came in, they were saying we're going to like state control a lot of these industries, we're going to um, protect the people and we have a philosophy that will do that which is nationalistic pride in the past and an aim for the future which is what this film kind of shows, let's just try to show it um, like visually, like it starts off the clouds coming down into uh, Germany, into Nuremberg for this the Nuremberg rally of the of 1934. So like, ten years after this, the Nazis are pretty much finished. But during this time, this is them at the peak of pathologizing their view of society. This is their view of this is what's what's going to be the future of mankind, which is really not a good idea. Uh, anyone who ever says this is the future of mankind, you should really be suspicious of. So, the film is trying to show that and, tr and is very dodgy because it's, it's fallen for its the lies of the people paying for the film. And the people involved in it are like obviously Nazi supporters. You couldn't make this kind of film if you weren't really a believer in it. You couldn't have all these shots that are in love with people doing Ezekiel, people, crowds of people all like lining up to see Hitler. You could not do a film unless you really believed in it. And this film has belief all over it. I mean it starts with them coming into Nuremberg then it shows them the, the, basically the SA youth, which are the young people who in five years are going to be, be grown up and fighting the war. You know, like you watch this film and you realise that most of the people died in the war. They're all doing their, um, the, 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 the tributes to Hitler and things, and most of them are going to be dead in ten years and their, their lives are ruined because of this bizarre fantasy that come up after an economic collapse in Germany. And it's just a great, the great way to actually disprove any pathologies actually just show it as it is and just show what are the most extreme versions of it, what that leads to. And this film does it, I mean, um, there's talk of YouTube trying to ban it, which I think is a really bad idea. I think YouTube should let it be seen so people can see this is stupid. This is really stupid. Because it is. I mean, it's utterly stupid and it needs to be argued against. The same way something like um, Buffer Nations, another thing, a really stupid film needs to be argued against. But you need to see it to see how horrible it is. And this film is really horrible. You feel pretty much sick to your stomach watching a lot of the time because you're seeing um, signs of a society just going completely corrupt. But it's also using things you see in modern day society again repeating and you're thinking, hoping they don't go as far as that. I mean there's all these, I mean at the start of it they're showing a lot of um, tributes and a lot of local marches as it's going into, as, as the map, that's the marches are true, but they've got a lot of fates and stuff and the way that a lot of towns have them still and all over the world, you know, you, the local councils to have like a festival to get money in the town 
once a year and it becomes a sort of weird creepy thing or a lines in the past and I think a lot of people have seen this well have seen something maybe the local town has stuff like that and you can sense that people believe in this a bit too much believe in this bullshit of the past that has been sold to them it's been prettified to try and sell to people and it's like it's just nostalgia turned sewer it's just horrific and it's it's something a lot of people really dislike and it really alienates them from the community and but when it when that kind of nostalgia and patriotism and belief in your own past your own like idealized version of the past comes through and becomes a dominant mode of communication between people that's when you're in real trouble because it doesn't start with someone up above saying you will listen to me it starts low in the talk between people in the conventions of society and and nostalgia of the past and patriotic feeling that like, like slowly gets twisted and slowly gets twisted and you use what's there like youth groups you get the teachers who are easily corruptible to follow this new doctrine so it's getting taught to people and slowly the sure people are getting brought into this horrible, horrible idea. And you see that all the time in any society. What's the view of society becomes the doctrine that's fed to the people and some people rebel against it and a lot of people don't. So it becomes this thing. And that's what comes through this film a lot is these people have been slowly brought into the, the Nazi idea and now it's because it's become a social convention and no one's going to fight against social convention. And this film is the explosion of them trying to propagandise everything to be something that's going to, to the near view, lead to the Thousand Year Reich. Which of course never happened, thank God. And it's the first half of the film, it's all about the processions, it's all about the march, it's all the youth, showing the youth as healthy youth, as people who can do things, they're fit and healthy the way the Nazis wanted people to be. They're strong and it's all about that and then you get to the speeches and you get to the, all these scenes of these like marching like banners and going through the night and you're seeing the progression of how they view themselves almost as knights, old knights who are going to spread this kingdom all over the world and you're starting to get, you're getting really creeped out at this point and then they talk about racial, racial purity and it's like, oh, okay, they, they said it out loud really early, that's not good. And they're very proud of that in this thing and the speeches go on and on and on through Hitler, Hitler, all those people. they only seen bite-sized parts of them, but they've seen the parts they want to be um, shown to the world, which is the pride of the German race and all that stuff, all that crap that led to World War Two, and it's a horrific film that's necessary to see but it's not one you should really want to own you know so that's trying for the well it's horrible but you should try and see it at least once but you should also do what I did and watch Night and Fog afterwards because Night and Fog the corrective towards all of that Alvin he made this it's half an hour long and it puts paid to everything in this bloody film, this, this horrible film. Nightfall takes all apart in 30 minutes. It shows the death camps, that's a, that's a result of racial purity. It shows you the piles of um, hair that's been cut off, people who have been put in the, top, put in the um, gas chambers. It shows the building of the gas chambers, like people are forced to build the gas chambers People are paid to design them and then they say well, we designed them but we weren't, we, didn't, we weren't happy how they were used. You designed them, you're guilty. And it's all about the people trying to avoid guilt for stuff. They were just foreign orders. No they weren't, they were part of the system. They are part of the system, this ter terrible, horrific system that industrialised mass murder. And it's just showing you how the death camps worked. Uh, how they had the commandant, the different levels, commandants and the the people, uh, the guards, the people who organised everything 
the people who are paid. It should hit each one was designed. Each death camp was designed in different ways because they're different architects. So some went in Japanese style, some went very plain. It just shows that human people, human beings did this. It shows you the guards who would be cruel to uh, anybody coming into the camp just because they were bored. It showed you when you view people as subhuman. It shows you the um the basically all the Jews that come in, the ones who weren't killed instantly they had to survive and starve and almost fight for each other for food. And then it showed you the other side of it of they help each other out for food, trying to give food to people who were worst off, extra rations people were worst off. Then try, people just try to collectively survive this horrific experience. But it shows you the devastation of this horrific ideology that started in what was basic nostalgia for the past and what do we do with the future. An idealised version of what we could do. It shows you the end result of this mass murder. People can be horrible. People are horrible when they view others as non-human you know and it's just a function of society that's the way they view it and they just they just showed the utter horror of all and you've all these camp commandants who were having parties in their in their good well built um, homes you saw that they some of the Jewish women were raped by the soldiers because they could you know they're going to die anyway so they did that there's just detail after detail it's just a half an hour of detail after detail of how horrific this whole thing was and it's just a devastating film just half i mean sure is devastating for the accumulation of detail over eight to ten hours this is half an hour just boom one two three four five this is all that happened None of this can be denied, this is what happened, deal with it. And it's just awful. Because it doesn't skimp away from all the horrific images. You see the pile of glasses, you see a pile of hair, and how it was used for cloth. You see the, the pillars of bodies that are, that are just pushed into a ditch. All these horrific, starved human beings. It just shows it all. And it's just devastating film, it really is. There's not much more I can say about it, just go watch it, it's so horrific, but it's needed, you need to see this film, it is a necessity if you're a breathing human being to see Night and Fog, it's that important a film, and it's the corrective to the utter garbage that is Triumph of the Will. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I didn't rant too much, because I kind of ranted for hours about this, but Triumph of the Will, how I hated, hated this film, how just disgusting it was and how amazing Night and Fog is for showing you the actual end result of like you know totalitarianism and ideological um, views that become a societal norm and how they can be utterly destructive to people how people are viewed as nothing so anyway I'm going to stop now before I start ranting again for the next 20 minutes I hope, I'm not sure if you're going to enjoy this video, but I hope it was informative. And I'll be back soon with some more. The rest of the week's going to be much more lighter. So, I'll see you then.